Welcome to the Destiny Awaits podcast. I'm your host, Andrea John, and today we're going to be diving deeper into who God is and almost continue what we talked about last week in terms of who God is. Last week we talked about God is love. This week we're going to kind of start expanding on the God is is topic. Um, but before we do that, I just want to thank you guys for being here, for listening, for supporting. If you don't yet follow me on social media, head over there. Um, I'll have the link in the show notes for you. Um, I am doing this in video this week because there are folks who told me that they prefer to watch on YouTube than the podcast app. So in order to just have this content out there for everyone. Um, I just figured I would do video, even though I prefer to just do voice because it's easier. Um, here I am in video as well. So don't you worry if you are listening on the podcast app, there are no visuals today. I am not showing anything, um, that you will have to see. So just hearing the sound of my voice is enough. Um, so thank you for those of you who do support. Um, if you haven't yet, could you please subscribe? And more importantly, can you share? Because if this content has blessed you, if you've found it helpful to you, then it most definitely will be helpful to someone else. So please do share. It's a great way to support um, my ministry and the things that I do without having to financially contribute. Trust me when I say that sharing at this point in the game is more valuable than money um, when it comes to just sharing the message that God has placed on my heart. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, just know that I have tons of notes here because I do love Bible study and I will be referring to a lot of scripture. So I won't always be looking at the screen um, and uh, I will be looking down at my notes and going through everything. So please bear with me. And my printer just started going off <laughs> out of nowhere and that scared me. So as you guys can see, I am a one man show here. I don't have any support. I do all this stuff on my own. Um, so it is real raw and as authentic as you get. So let's dive in. So last week I shared a teaching that I did at the retreat on God is love, and that was just a portion of it. So you missed a little bit of the identity message, um, that I shared at the retreat, but don't forget that I did do an episode specifically on identity uh, several weeks ago, so you can go access that. So if you haven't watched the episode, I do recommend that you go listen to it because I think it's a good foundation. But if you haven't, don't worry, you don't need to stop listening to this one. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to take away from what you're going to hear today. Um, so you know, we'll just keep going. But when you have a chance, definitely go back and listen to the episode. Okay, so today we're going to dive deep, um, deeper into identity. So last time we talked about God is love. Hopefully you listened to that because we deep dive into that. Um, and today we're going to talk about another God is. At the retreat, I talked about four within the same session but I had to kind of speed through it because I was short on time and we don't have a lot of time at these retreats. So I had to kind of condense it. But the great thing about podcasts and doing these videos um, that's great is I can take my time and really dive into it and put them out there in bite size chunks. And that's what I'm hoping to do today. But what I wanted to do before I dive into the first God is of our uh, series is really talk about how we're made in the image of God. We hear that a lot and we see it in Genesis 1 within the creation story. And usually when we do hear it, it's really focused on that passage. But did you know 
that the scriptures, throughout scriptures, old and new, there are references to how we are made in the image of God. So being made in the image of God is not just something that we see at the time of creation. We see that message resonate throughout scriptures. So I'm going to read a few scriptures here. And what I would suggest and recommend is that you take the time and do SOAP studies on these. So SOAP is a great Bible study method to really take the scriptures and apply it to your life. Make the scriptures come alive. SOAP is S for scripture, O for observation. What do you take out of the scripture? A is for application. How can I apply this scripture? Um, in my life. And then P is for prayer. So when I say soap devotional, that's what I'm talking about. Now, the reason I recommend that you dive deeper into the verses that I'm going to share is because um, some of these verses that I'm going to be reading don't really start at the beginning of the thought process. And you guys know I'm very big into context. I probably use that word context a lot. <laughs> Um, in all my teachings, podcasts, videos, and all this stuff. So I'm really big into it, but due to time and such, right? We can't, I don't really dive deep into every single thing that I'm going to read because I'm really trying to stay within the topic. So this is very topical, but I do recommend you dive deep and kind of read the whole thought around these verses. And again, don't just take my word for it. Like go and study these things so that you can, work with God and, you know, spend time with God and make sure that I'm not teaching you the wrong thing, right? So for me and for anyone else, you want to go in and dive deeper. Don't ever just take someone's word for it, that something is in the Bible, the Bible says this, that the Bible means that, because what we're coming to you with is interpretation. Um, so I would always recommend that you study the scriptures for yourself. So let's dive in. So first we're going to read Genesis 1, 26 through 27. And this is the one that everyone knows, right? It says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image in the image of God, he created them male and female, he created them. This is a passage we hear about all the time. In Genesis 5, 1 through 2, it says, this is the written account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. And he named them mankind when they were created. In Genesis 9, 6, it says, Whoever sheds human blood, by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. So here we see that it's again referring to how humans are made in the image of God. And if we kill another human, we are killing someone made in the image of God. That's a very powerful statement. Now rolling into the New Testament, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, I'm going to read the verse before 24 just because of where it starts in the sentence. I want to make sure it makes sense. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So you see here that it's telling us that we were created to be like God. In Colossians 3.10, it says, and have put on, again, this is in the middle of a sentence, so I recommend you go and read the whole thing, but it says, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. So again, we are made in the image of creator and we when we put on our new self, it renews that knowledge that we are made in the image of the creator. James 3, 9 says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and father, and with it, we curse human beings 
who have been made in God's likeness. So it's a very powerful statement because it's talking about how with the same tongue, we praise God, but we also destroy people. And it's reinforcing the fact that we are all made in the image of God. And when we curse human beings, we are cursing someone made in the image of God. That's so powerful. First Corinthians 15, 49 says, And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. In this passage within scripture, it's comparing Adam to Jesus and the roles that they played. So with here, what I wanted to emphasize is that we were called to bear the image of Christ, the heavenly man, right? To be in the image of God because Jesus is, is the visible image of God. Second Corinthians 3, 18, it says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. So here it's talking about being transformed into his image. We all know that the fall has happened. I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to dive into it because that's not what today is about. But with the fall came sin and sin has corrupted us or can corrupt us if we allow it to. But don't you worry because with, because of Jesus, we are able to transform into his image. And that brings me to Romans 8, 29 through 30, where it says, For those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So, this passage is telling us that that is what we are predestined to do. We have talked about this in uh, previous episodes, and I also have an episode on predestination that I suggest you dive into if you want to learn more about it, because I dive deep into what we are predestined to do. What is your destiny? What has God predestined you uh, to do and who has he predestined you to be and this verse is the key it tells us that we are predestined to conform to the image of his son and who does his son look like colossians 1 15 tells us the son is the image of the invisible god so if you want to know what god looks like who he is how he would act you can look to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a standard for our lives, not my experiences, not what I've gone through, not my fellow believers, not leaders in church. The the image that I need to follow who who perfectly represents God is Jesus. Now, we are to step into that role and we are to also express the image of God through our lives. We talked about that in previous episodes, and we will talk about that moving forward. Um, but at times we fail, as you know. I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm not flawless. There are times that I don't necessarily take the right approach, don't handle things the best. I don't know everything as God knows it. Um, sometimes I act through emotion and things like that. So, you know, it's important for us to realize that I'm not supposed to mimic the behavior of others if they fail. My experiences aren't supposed to mold my standard. Jesus should mold my standard. And the way I live my life and the beliefs that I have really are from me looking at the life of Jesus. And for those of you who know me, those of you who follow me, you know, I am a very passionate person and I have very passionate opinions about certain things. And more likely than not, those uh, opinions that I have, beliefs that I have, have stemmed from observing, studying, and looking at the life of Jesus and living that way to the best of my ability. So as you can see, we are all created in the image and likeness of God. Sure, we may not necessarily do the best job at reflecting that image, but that is who we are created to be um, and to look like. So that is kind of, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's my forward looking vision. I am running towards that mark to conform to the image of Christ, to bear the image of God so that I can reflect him while everything I do comes from that place. So my purpose, my vision in life, my goals, everything that I do really is about 
trying my best to express God, to bring everyone into the image and likeness of God, because if we were to all bear that image, I think the world would be a much better place, which is something that I think we all would love to see. So transitioning into the God is, as last week we talked about God is love. That is the foundation of everything. It is the core of everything that God is and what he does. I don't think you can separate anything that we talk about God, study about God, see in the scripture from his love. If you view it from the lens of love and his core, even things that sometimes seem to not make sense suddenly make sense. Um, and if it doesn't make sense, I think, and it doesn't align with perfect love, I think we need to take a moment and step back and say, maybe I'm misunderstanding something or I don't know something. And that's the road I've been on for several years is maybe I don't know something. Maybe I'm missing something and really seeking to understand and to know the heart of God. And this is what I try and bring to you, what I've learned along the way. Now, one of the interesting things about who God is within scripture, because I am someone who firmly believes that the scriptures need to be foundational <clears throat> to our views of God um, and um, how how we view God and how we view ourselves. Um, I know that there are what may be considered extra biblical books um, that are not in the can canon Bible that we know today that people refer to. Um, and I have my opinions about that. I've read those books. I see where they can be in scripture. But what I, what I do believe and what I have seen is that even though those books would be great to have in scripture and complement the Bible pretty well, actually, I still have seen that the 66 books of the Bible that are the canon for the Christian church today or most of the Christian church today does provide substance enough to understand who God is. Um, if you want to dive deeper into different areas, some of those books are helpful, but the 66 books in the Bible to me are foundational to understanding who God is. You can find everything that you need within those 66 books. Um, even though there are books that could technically be in there and there's reasons for them not being, that's not what this episode is about. So here we see, um, God portrayed within the scriptures and I am very big into looking at scripture and seeing who God is. So when I read scripture and I'm reading these stories of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, um, you know, Abraham, Noah, obviously not in order, David, Jeremiah, you know, all the disciples, all the prophets. While I'm reading those stories and those stories are amazing, right? You can see within them that humans are flawed and there are flaws within these individuals. And they tell a great story and they teach a lot of lessons. But I have taken the approach where when I read these stories, these scriptures, these preachings, these teaching, these letters, I'm actually looking for what is this telling me about God? What does this tell me about who God is? Or what is the author trying to share with us about who God is? And it has really opened up a lot to me in terms of knowing God, because now I'm not reading the book, the Bible from the perspective of rules, of do's and don'ts, um, but I'm reading it from a place of intimacy, wanting to know God in a deeper way, and it really pairs so well with a life of prayer and worship. Within scriptures, what we see is who God is within scripture, who he is once the world has been created. So obviously Genesis starts off with, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then we start to see who God is we don't really see much about who God is before earth, the universe was created. 
For example, we know how God works within time, but, and we know that he is the beginning and the end. Again, a time reference, beginning and end, but we don't know anything about God being timeless. The Bible has never talked about God being timeless. He is the beginning. He is the end. We know how he works within uh, within time, within creation. So just something that I wanted to throw out there. I'm not saying that God is not timeless. I'm saying I don't know if God is timeless because the scriptures don't reveal that to us because what we see is who God is within time. The one attribute, however, that we're going to talk about today is an attribute of God that we know was there before the world, the universe and heavens were created because he brought it forth. And that is God is light. God being light is something that was clearly in existence before the world was created. So let's explore this a little bit more in Genesis at the very beginning where God introduced light to the universe. It says in Genesis 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So one thing I want to know here is this is in the very beginning. God later on creates the sun, the moon, and the stars. And while they were there to illuminate uh, the earth, they are also there to, uh, the purpose was actually to create time, to separate years, times, and seasons. But this light that God brought in was a little bit different. Before the sun, moon, and stars, he brought in a light. And this is, I see as his light. He brought his light. There was darkness and he brought in his light and he used it to illuminate him. And we see in 1 John 1, 5, it says, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you. Okay, so this is John saying, this is what we heard from Jesus. Jesus taught us this. And now I'm telling you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So when God ushered in light in the very beginning, the light he brought in was of himself. It was not the sun, the moon, and the stars. It was not to illuminate the earth. It was to separate the light and the darkness. Now, as I mentioned, there are five attributes to God that I call the God is's, and there are many characteristics within these attributes, you know, so we can kind of break them up if we want to. And I may break them up at some point here and dive deeper into each of them. Um, it'll make more sense in some of the future God is's that we discuss, but for the purposes of understanding who God is and really uh, to kind of bring the teaching and what God has taught me together, I've come up with these five because I feel like they're easy to understand. The concept is there. Um, like I said, we could break it up. So within God is light. There are other God is um, that I kind of bucket into God is light. And that is God is pure and God is holy. So when I look in scripture, I see the scriptures reveal and tell me that God is pure and God is holy. For the purposes of our study, I have joined that all together with God is light because I see his holiness and his purity come from light. So as I've mentioned in the past, when I see God, I see a diamond and that purity and his holiness really come from the light that comes through. Hopefully that makes sense to you, but let's dive into them just a little bit within scripture. So let's talk about God is pure. Uh, there's a, a verse 
1 John 3, 3, that says, and all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure for he is pure. So again, the scriptures tell us, John is telling us that God is pure. In 1 Peter 1, 16, Peter reveals to us, for the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. And we see this in the Old Testament also numerous times, how God is holy. For example, Leviticus 11, 44, it says, For I am the Lord your God, you must consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. God is holy. He is pure. He is light. Light is to me, when I, when I think about these things, I see light. Light purifies. For some reason, like I've mentioned, when I think about God, I see a diamond. And the essence of this diamond is love, but it's pure and it's holy. There's light. It, it comes out of the diamond. If you ever seen light that comes through the diamond, it's just, to me, it's kind of like it then oozes love. It The rainbow just portrays God's love. Everything God does is within his love, his light, and his wholeness. So the reason that God is who he is, the reason he has Adonai, he is the one and only God is because he is pure, is because he is holy. It is because he is love. So as we continue today on God is love, uh, sorry, God is light, because we've talked about God is love last week. I want you to also think about how God is pure and God is holy within the context of how he is light. John 1, 1 through 5 says, in the beginning, the word already existed. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word. He is the rhema. He is the living word. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. I want you to think about Genesis and what we read in Genesis. God brought light. Darkness was already there. Okay. The earth was formless and void and he spoke light and separated the light from the darkness and much like this we see in this passage where it's saying that his life brings life it brings light to everyone sorry his life brings light to everyone so his words his life breathes light into the world into our lives this concept of light is so important because I want you to think about when you're going through struggles, when you're going through pain, when you're going through trials and tribulations, if you really stop and observe what your body is going through, how you are feeling, there is a darkness that becomes apparent and the light of God is what extinguishes it. That's what this says. And the darkness can never extinguish light. We need his light to come and bring light into the darkness. To separate the light and the darkness. Make it very clear. John begins his gospel in the beginning. And he shares with us that it is the life of Jesus that brought light to everyone. This was possible because he is light and light begets light. In John 8, 12, it says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have light that leads to life. So his life 
brings light. His light brings life. So let me repeat that. His life brings light and his light brings life. Is that not what we all want? To have an abundant life, to have a better quality of life, to not just survive, but to thrive, to have life, not misery, not condemnation, not darkness, but life. This is what his life offers. As we conform to the image of Christ, the light in us will grow, allowing us to bring light to others. Made in the image of God, we are called to be light as he is light. We see this in Matthew 5, 14. So up until this point, we have talked about how God is light. And we've looked at scriptures that talk about how God is light. And remember, before we talked about God is light, we read all of those passages that discuss how we are made in the image and likeness of God, how we are called to be conformed to the image of Christ. That is what you are called to do. And in this concept of light, we see in Matthew 5, 14, it says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. So not only does Jesus tell us, I am the light, he also said, you are the light. That is so powerful. Jesus told us that not only is he the light, but that you are the light, that I am the light because we bear the image of God. That is what we are called to do. So then the question becomes, okay, so I am the light. I am supposed to be light just as he is light. What does that look like? Simple answer. And the scriptures reveal this to us. Good deeds. In Matthew 5, 16, it says, In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So our good deeds need to shine out, okay, shine out like light so that everyone can praise the Father. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus, not by our deeds, okay? So I want to make sure and be very clear about that. It is not our good deeds that save us. It is his grace through faith that saves us. Nothing you do will earn your salvation, but it is through our good deeds that our faith is revealed, that others see our faith. Faith and our deeds are two different things, but do you see how they work in tandem? They work together. You cannot have one without the other. If you have faith, you will have good deeds. And if you have good deeds, it's because you have faith. Without one, the other is dead. And we see this in Romans 2, 8 through 9, where it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, not by work, so that no one can boast, right? So that was where we see what I was just talking about, how we are not saved by deeds. We are saved by grace through faith. And then in James 2.17, it says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. So these two things work in tandem. They work together, our faith and our deeds. Made in the image and likeness of God, you are created to be light. And when you have the light of Jesus in your life, your actions will reveal this light to the world. It will shine and it will bring others to give praise and glory to God. The light that you reflect is Jesus. It is God. It is Holy Spirit. And when you reflect this light through your good deeds, it will allow others to see God. In last week's teaching, we see how 
love brings God to full expression in people's life. They may never see God face to face, but through our love, they can see God. And in the same way, when we are light, it reveals God bringing others to give praise to God. This is how powerful being light is. Having good deeds is. It demonstrates God in our lives. It demonstrates our faith. Good deeds is not about following a rule. It's about revealing the heart of the Father. That is the light. Revealing the heart of the Father through our good deeds to show that God loves and God cares and God is there and God has not distant. God does not want to condemn. God does not want to punish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that no one would perish but have everlasting life. Do our deeds, does the light I shine show this to the world? This verse that is known by so many people, Christians and non-Christians, we see sports players, you know, have John 3, 16 all the time. It's something that so many people know. The question we need to ask here today is, do my deeds, do my actions, does the light that I reveal show for God so loved the world that he gave his only son So that no one would perish, but have everlasting life. Because when we reveal light, we reveal Jesus. He said, I am the light of the world. And we are called to be the light of the world so that others can see him. God is light. You are called to be light. I am called to be light. And when we all bring our light together, man, does it pierce through that darkness. Does it bring clarity? Maybe you need clarity in your life today. Maybe things are confusing. Maybe there's so much darkness. Look to the light of the world. Look to him because he is light and he wants to pierce that darkness with his light. He wants to go right through like a sword with his light, bringing just like he did with light and darkness in the beginning, confusion and clarity. He will separate the two for you. Just look to him. And then on top of that, look to be the light, just as he is light, made in the image and likeness of God, You are called to be the light of the world. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. Um, I love that I can share this with you because it is this message that has changed my life so deeply and really has enhanced the quality of my life despite the trials and tribulations, the hard things of life. It is who God is that has really changed everything about it. And I can walk through painful moments with smiles and peace inside my heart because in the end, I know he's greater and he is light and he is the one that separates the light from the darkness. It makes all the difference. So I just pray that you may come to know God, the one who is light the one who will bring clarity to any confusion, the one who will bring light to all the dark things and give you peace that surpasses understanding. If this message has blessed you, again, I ask that you share it with your family and friends. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to reach out to me um, on social media or on my email, hello at andreajohn.com. And hey, feel free to stop by my website. There's a lot of blog posts out there, a lot of different topics um, for you to read about. Maybe it'll help you with something that you're going through. Until next time, bye.